Welcome everybody, uh, welcome to SharePoint conference. This is the dev keynote right after the uh, Jeff Deepers keynote where we're gonna concentrate on the SharePoint developer platform. So we're gonna concentrate on what's new and what's next, uh, next for SharePoint development for enterprises. So we're gonna walk through a lot of topics today and we will have quite a few people walking on the stage and doing live demos of cool stuff and new stuff and new capabilities. We also have a pleasure of having two different partners joining us on the stage and showing what they've been building using the Microsoft 365 developer platform, and especially using a SharePoint and a Microsoft Teams in this case. My name is Vesa Juvonen. I'm a principal program manager uh, from the SharePoint and OneDrive uh, developer platform team, and my responsibility is basically the open source communities, uh, partner ecosystem, and customer adaption of our platform uh, capabilities. So if, if there's any challenges related on documentation, if there's any API mistakes in our documentation, I am the guy to blame. So don't, do come tell me uh, how we can improve our documentation and guidance for SharePoint development during this day and during these weeks and this week as well and also in the future. Now, what we wanted to actually start uh, quickly explaining the bigger, let's say, positioning uh, for uh, SharePoint as well. So this is SharePoint Conference 2019 in Las Vegas, but we wanted to actually talk about also what does the SharePoint mean in a bigger scale uh, in the Microsoft 365 developer platform. And obviously in the Microsoft 365 app foundation, everything starts with the people. Everything starts with the persona who's accessing the actual solution and using the solution. And to get, in, in, to get access on that information based on persona, it's all about act, uh, using the Microsoft Graph APIs with the contextual APIs for the information which is relevant for the persona. And then obviously we have multiple different uh, services and solutions which are used inside of the Microsoft 365 uh, App Foundation or in the Microsoft 365 ecosystem. So basically these are scenarios and functionalities and behind of all of these are typically then a solution or a product. If you are a SharePoint developer or especially SharePoint Online developer, you actually touch quite a few of these areas. You, you don't necessarily just concentrate on pages and portals. You're actually gonna use Microsoft Craft and you're gonna expose your data and solutions, potentially using Microsoft Teams as well. And that's really the idea of here. We wanna actually consolidate this platform. We wanna make sure that you have tools and development capabilities of building and hosting your solutions in any of these different scenarios, in, regardless of the actual solution and application, what is being used. And obviously Microsoft Craft in the center of all of that getting access on the information. Now, what is the actual partner uh, opportunity here? So the Microsoft 365 is a massive ecosystem. We have more than one billion uh, users across the work and live, uh, live and edu accounts, so it's more than one billion users. It's more than a one million monthly active apps which are using and hosted within this platform. So it's a massive, massive opportunity for system integrators and ISVs to take advantage uh, and offering their solutions in this ecosystem. There's more than one bi 100 billion Microsoft Craft requests per month through this ecosystem, uh, accessing the relevant information uh, and being exposed to data within the customization built by you as an ISVs and system integrators or in-house developers as well. Now, what does this mean actually in the SharePoint uh, perspective then? Because this is the SharePoint conference, so we're not gonna actually deep dive on the other areas, SharePoint in the middle, but obviously the other areas on the sides as well. So in SharePoint, the biggest thing what we released pretty recently, well, three years ago, actually it was announced three years ago, is the SharePoint framework. And the SharePoint framework has been designed really to be the way to extend the UI in the Office 365 level. We started with SharePoint, and that has been now extended to be used in the Microsoft Teams as the facto way of extending, extending the UI and providing capabilities. Obviously, if you are in SharePoint, it's about modern pages and modern experiences where you are exposing and implementing web parts and extensions and, and widgets and functionalities in the UI. Uh, and the SharePoint framework is really the UI layer of this all. And then you are able to access the relevant data using the Microsoft Graph APIs or the other APIs which we're providing towards uh, within this platform. And obviously you're able to call Microsoft uh, Azure APIs and extend your solution using the intelligence which we have available in the Microsoft Cloud. 
Now, the Microsoft uh, the SharePoint framework was released or announced uh, little, uh, slightly over three years ago. It went GA two and a half years ago. So it's actually quite settled as a new development model. Is it a new development model anymore? It's already three years when we announced that. But still, regardless of the time frame of three years, it's still growing to insanely fast, amazingly fast, the year by year. So the actual uses of SharePoint framework within the past year has grown 373%. It's insane. It's the third year already after the initial announcement. These kind of numbers typically happen for the first months and few first year, but it doesn't actually keep on having this level of growth throughout the years and years. And the adaption curve is just going skyrocketing at the moment. So we've never seen similar kind of adaption across our uh, ecosystem for any development uh, framework which is coming out. After the uh, GA release of SharePoint Framework, which happened on February 23rd of February 2017, unless I'm completely mistaken, we already had 10 more SharePoint Framework announcements and GA updates after that. So we keep on evolving that based on your feedback, which is super important as well. We do not know all of the scenarios and where you want to extend SharePoint and Microsoft 365, so we use our ecosystem feedback channels to get your input in and so we're able to address what, is, what are the gaps and what is actually needed within this platform. Now, let's talk about slightly on the SharePoint framework, just making sure that everybody is aware of what it is uh, from a quick introduction perspective, if you're not aware where we're coming from with this one. So first of all, Microsoft uh, SharePoint framework is absolutely the modern client-side development tooling. It is using not SharePoint-isms. You're actually using the industry standard ways of implementing uh, your web extensibility, using Angular, using React, using Vue.js, or Ember, or Knockout. It doesn't really matter, because you can use any of them. It's a lightweight web and mobile. So the framework actually gives you a native responsiveness as long as you implement your extensibility using the native SharePoint framework capabilities. It powers our own experiences. Super, super important thing. Because this means that you can actually safely bet on it it's not an application model or extensibility model which we introduced to you, but we as an engineering, we're not using that. No, no. Everything what you see in a modern SharePoint, everything what you saw in a Jeff, uh, Jeff Tepper's keynote is actually being built using SharePoint framework, the UI layer of those experiences. They're using exactly the same framework as, as you are to extend SharePoint. And that will, should give you the guarantee that we're not going to actually introduce another model in a year. No, no. That, I can promise that. That's not going to happen. The SharePoint framework is definitely the right model in here. Now, to be fair, we're going to talk about this one slightly later during this presentation. We might, be, we might be forced to change the name of SharePoint framework, but the underlying technologies will remain exactly the same. And I'll come back on that uh, discussion in a second. The SharePoint framework is also backward compatible, which gives you the enterprise scale guarantee that your extensibility, which has been built two years ago, will still work in SharePoint Online today. So even though we keep on releasing new versions of SharePoint Framework almost every single month or bi-monthly right now, um, you can guarantee that you don't have to always upgrade to the latest and greatest version. You absolutely can, because there's cool new capabilities available. But if you have implemented your stuff using SharePoint Framework 1.0, that customization still works in SharePoint Online today and years to come. And that is a promise what we make as a SharePoint engineering which actually is a pretty relatively big headache for us as well, but that's on us, not on you. It's a promise what we want to take uh, for the future as well. And like I said, it supports uh, open source tools and JavaScript web frameworks based on your selection. We do not know what JavaScript frameworks are getting re released this week and next week or within the two years, because there's always new uh, frameworks getting uh, released all the time. But the SharePoint framework actually adapts on all of these upcoming frameworks. And we're going to demonstrate some of that, actually, uh, with the demo together with Luca Pandinelli uh, with after a few slides. If you're interested on SharePoint Framework, if you are not yet super familiar with this, AKMS SVFX training uh, is the training package, which is available for you for free. Includes videos, demo uh, presentation, hands-on labs, and all of that, so you get familiar of what is a SharePoint Framework in a matter of hours, and you can start extending uh, and implementing customizations on top of SharePoint Online. And Microsoft Teams as well. Now, moving on our things. So, 
uh, the one area which I wanted to quickly remind as well, as part of the SharePoint framework, it's not just about web parts, it's also about extensions. And this is an area where we keep on evolving more and more later this year, adding additional extensibility points on top of the existing ones. So we already have application customizer, which will give you the capabilities of having headers and footers and extensibility embedded on any page in the modern SharePoint. We have good command sets, which give you the capability of adding buttons and menu items, which will then execute your JavaScript when the menu item is actually clicked. And then we have the field customizers, which give you the capability of overriding the presentation of the field, uh, field uh, information in a way that you're able to actually include JavaScript in that level as well. One of the areas which is super important this this bigger story also is the Office UI fabric because we actually build a lot of capabilities in SharePoint Online Engineering and in Microsoft 365 Engineering, and we want all of those to be consistent from a UI perspective. We actually have a quite massive uh, engineering, uh, sorry, design team who's responsible of defining how SharePoint looks, how Microsoft Office 365 looks, how Microsoft 365 actually looks in practice. And then those designs are getting brought to you using reusable code as an Office UI Fabric React components, also toolkits for the designers helping you to design your capabilities, and we have plenty of documentation on the Office UI Fabric as well. Definitely something what you want to have a look, if you can actually reuse this in your extensibility and your solutions as well, because it, again, it will increase your productivity, which is the key for all of us. Now, we do have, actually, we have released SharePoint Framework, like I said, two and a half years ago to the GA. And after that, we actually released quite recently new capabilities where SharePoint Framework can be used. So quite recently, as part of the 1.8, we released SharePoint Framework support for app pages. So you actually are able to build app pages inside of SharePoint Online uh, using the SharePoint Framework. You can also build Microsoft Teams tabs. And really the difference between a building a web part or an app page or a Microsoft Teams tab is a one attribute. It's the same piece of code. So you as a developer, you don't actually need to worry about where is my code being hosted. It will work as a Microsoft uh, or SharePoint web part or as an app page or a Microsoft Teams tab. And quite recently, uh, first time uh, we demonstrated uh, the preview or we demonstrated upcoming capabilities of building Office add-ins using SharePoint Framework. Uh, as part of the Microsoft Build, uh, so two weeks ago in Seattle. It was the first demo on that one, and we're looking into getting that one live uh, for you to preview uh, within upcoming uh, weeks or upcoming months, so later this year as well. But like mentioned, SharePoint Framework actually scales, and SharePoint Framework, you can extend that in a multiple different ways. And one of the things what Jeff actually, Jeff had in, in his keynotes as well, was the really exciting fluid framework which we actually announced and first time also demonstrated in Microsoft Teams, uh, Microsoft Build. So, and I wanted to actually invite on the stage uh, Luca Bandinelli to show how we are innovating and how we can add any framework as part of the SharePoint framework in the future as well. So Luca, welcome. Okay, so this is gone. Good. So perfect. Let's move over here. And so Jeff mentioned that um, in the keynote this morning that we have this uh, fluid framework that was announced at Build a couple of weeks ago in terms of the ability, this framework that was built in order to create real-time, high-level collaboration across multiple browsers. And we have seen a bunch of videos about that. And we said, well, let's try to make it a little, a little bit more real than that and try to do something just like a real demo. So what we have here, we have this canvas on the right, and we have a full uh, SharePoint web part here that was built by using the SharePoint framework, and this is a SharePoint page. And you can see that while Veza is typing, move the cursor, while Veza is typing, uh, so hi Veza, and he's basically typing on the canvas that you can see over here on the right uh, that is happening. Uh, this Fluid Frameworks gives you the ability to see the information in real time, and you can see the changes happening while Veza is typing. Uh, so Fluid is awesome. And I can type over here, and you can see that the person is typing. And again, you can see that in real time. On the, document, on the document in the canvas as well. So this is real, what, nothing more than a SharePoint web part. And you can see that by clicking on Edit. 
and you can see a full SharePoint framework web part. You can click on the configuration. Right now, the configuration provides the pointer to the uh, content that is showed in the other canvas. And this is, to be honest, just like an early stage, but it gives you the ability to understand that SharePoint framework is basically a concept that gives you the ability to bring whatever other framework that you want in order to build your solution. Doesn't matter if it's a rendering framework or is a data framework just like Fluid it is. And really, in a matter of uh, hours, you can build your solution and this solution will be able to surface the information and change the, see, you can see that right now, and being able to build your collaborative solution across multiple browsers uh, by using both SharePoint framework and Fluid framework. Excellent, that's really exciting, uh, really cool stuff. Um, in general, Luca, you've been responsible of the SharePoint framework uh, development for quite a few years. Well, well, how does, it, um, how does the, the adaption of SharePoint framework feel for you, and how does it add the growth of that one? Well, I'm literally honored and humbled to see that the SharePoint framework has been adopted so much by all of you guys, all the developers and all the industries. And SharePoint Framework continues in growing in terms of not only adoption thanks to you, but also in terms of capabilities. When we started the SharePoint Framework a little bit more than two years ago, general availability was no February 2017. We started with web parts and we online. Then we added support for SharePoint on-prem. We added support for extensions. We added the capabilities for uh, Access Web API and Microsoft Graph. Very recently, we also added, added added component li library components, as well as web API. And you can see that the future is to go even further with uh, uh, enabling access and integration with Microsoft Teams, as well as Office Web and Rich Client. And now we are also being able to bring other framework, just like the Fluid framework for data real-time collaboration. Cool, excellent. Thank you, Luca. Thank you, Beza. Thank you, everybody. And let's see, now I get back on the slides. Here we go, and there's my clicker, not gonna lose that one. Now, thank you, Luca, for that one. So really, that's a good example of the fact that two weeks ago, we announced the Fluid Framework, and within a matter of a few days, we were able to integrate the Fluid Framework as part of the SharePoint Framework, and we're able to host that and give you a live demo on how those fraction, uh, those new document formats and the new way of doing li real lifetime, near lifetime edits on the page can be visible in the SharePoint as well. So SharePoint Framework is really the way of extending and hosting your extensibility regardless of the framework what you're using. It is really truly a flexible um, for all of those scenarios. Now, I talked about Microsoft Teams already slightly, uh, but I want, what we wanted to kind of talk about in here as part of the, uh, is a recap on what, we, what did we do with Microsoft Teams integration with SharePoint earlier actually this spring. So as part of 1.8 release of SharePoint Framework, which happened on a late March, so relatively new still, uh, well, of course, at the age of uh, industry right now, late March is like already a few years ago, right? Uh, so many things happen in every single day. But Microsoft Teams is a really big opportunity uh, for us as well and for ISVs and system integrators, and it's growing usage all the time. As part of the SharePoint Framework adaption curves being so high, Microsoft Teams uh, people uh, basically approach us and stuff. We started having a negotiations and discussions and planning sessions on how we can help them to make Microsoft Teams development more easier. And in SharePoint Framework, we have awesome capabilities related on easy deployment, automatic hosting of your code using the Office 365 CDN if you choose to, uh, really easy access to Microsoft Craft without any complexity of going the uh, Azure AD and Azure Application Management or granting permissions. We have a really simple deployment of these solutions in SharePoint Framework. And we also, want, uh, also wanted to work uh, together with Microsoft Teams to have a reuse capabilities of the same code across SharePoint uh, Online and Microsoft Teams. So as part of this journey, uh, which started quite a long, well, not a long time ago, uh, then as part of the 1.8, we released the Microsoft uh, Teams tabs built with SharePoint Framework to be available in general availability uh, for you as an ISVs and system integrators to take advantage. And really, like I said, the key point here was for us to simplify development, simplify hosting, simplify uh, the, the scenarios of access, accessing relevant information through the Microsoft Crowd. And I think we did a pretty decent job on that one. We could do a, quite demo, a few demos on that one uh, slightly later. Now, 
as part of this journey, we actually didn't stop there. We also wanted to make sure that the Microsoft Teams uh, the customizations to existing SaaS-based uh, extensibility in Microsoft Teams is reusable in the SharePoint Online side. And this is actually going to be announced to be GA general availability today. So if you have, if you're a uh, SaaS-based uh, provider and you have an extensibility in Microsoft Teams, that Microsoft Teams application will work as such without any modifications natively within the SharePoint Online as well. Thank you. And as part of this journey, we actually work with uh, quite a few companies. Uh, so we wanted to actually call out a few of our uh, partner companies as part of this journey of learning how we, well, learning and building and planning together how we want to expose the SharePoint framework in Teams. Uh, we had more than 10 and, or 15 companies, or actually more than that, but these are the 15 which we are allowed to actually show a logo, who were part of this journey of testing uh, these things in practice and giving us feedback in our designs, because obviously, as an engineering organization, we're not aware of all of the customer cases and all of the things what you want to do. So it's a super important thing to have that close connection together with our partners to get the feedback in and address your needs and your requirements in our implementation. Implementations. We also work with these following uh, companies on the, on the model where you can actually have the teams provided hosted solutions hosted in SharePoint. And based on the feedback, they've been really happy uh, on the model of making this happen. So in a matter of a few weeks, uh, which is a really small engineering time frame, they were able to adjust uh, their existing solutions and SaaS applications built for Microsoft Teams to then work natively within the SharePoint side as well because it's more around accessing then the SharePoint specific context and being able to work inside of the SharePoint ecosystem uh, without, with really, really minimal set of uh, modifications on the code. Now, to be able to understand this, what does it meant to actually take your existing SharePoint framework extensibility and move it on the Microsoft Teams side, we want to actually invite here two friends, uh, Fred and Chris uh, from Backstage, to actually show you this uh, using live demos on their extensibility, their ISV solutions, built together with uh, Microsoft and built with SharePoint Framework. Welcome, Fred. Welcome, Chris. Thank you. We'll let Fred start uh, the journey. OK, thank you very much. Hi, everybody. Uh, so um, yeah, we've been busy over the past 12 months uh, building four different products under the SharePoint framework. And uh, historically, these are products that have been available for years as WSPs, uh, and they've also been uh, available as add-ins as well. And the client side uh, web parts and the SharePoint framework has made it a lot easier for us to uh, provide the functionality that we used to do using our, our full trust solutions. So what I want to do here is first of all show one of our products, which is uh, the Lightning Conductor. It started life as a content aggregation tool that would roll up uh, SharePoint lists across different site collections, and that was available for SharePoint 2007 and, and 2010 back in the day. Um, but it also allowed you to add styling to the aggregated content easily as well. So we've got that to show here in, in SharePoint, um, but we've also been able to evolve it and offer that product into Microsoft Teams as well uh, as a team tab. So what we have here is a, an option is to be able to aggregate content from different types of lists. And we can either do this from the uh, quick configuration mode, or I can jump into the advanced configuration mode as well. Uh, so here I can aggregate tasks. Um, there's different predefined views that we can go through and select. And I can also choose where I want that content to come from. So one of the options is to aggregate from a hub site and all the associated sites as well. And as you'll see, there'll be different types of styles of views that we can display uh, based on the type of content that I'm aggregating. So simply by clicking Save at that point, we'll have some aggregated content. And now I can start to add some conditional formatting and things like that to that content as well. So for example, here we've got the uh, task status. Uh, so I could hit the drop down there and go through to the column formatting. And I can start to add some uh, formatting to that. So if we wanted to show any completed tasks, uh, I could maybe show that with uh, an icon or, or something to that effect. So here we can go through and select how we want that to uh, be presented. So um, any high priority tasks will, will show in green. Uh, that's the sickly green that you always are drawn to whenever you're demonstrating. <laughs> so that's the uh, completed task being highlighted there. And we've also got things like data bars that we can go through and add as well uh, just as easily. So from the formatting menu, we can uh, come through and add a data bar. So I can add a maximum value of one, um, hide the, uh, the value from the data bar itself, and uh, 
now we have some, some data bars being displayed on our aggregated content. Um, and it's also possible to go through and create multiple views, which you can see from this side panel. So one of the, uh, the, the benefits that we, we had recently um, was obviously being able to build that into Microsoft Teams as well. So this can be added through as a Teams tab. So as you can see here, we can launch the settings menu from the Teams tab. Um, and that allows me to go through and access some of the builds that I've already, or some of the views that I've already built. And um, one of them here is actually using Microsoft Planner Tasks, because obviously we've got lots of different options now for creating tasks. Uh, so in here, I can actually go through and uh, aggregate in different ways, and that includes using Microsoft Graph now. So we're not just limited to SharePoint lists. So using the, uh, the Graph rollup provider, I can select a, a different data source. So we've got some different entities that are available to me. So I can go and grab content from OneDrive or from Messages or, or anything like this. Uh, so I'll choose Planner Task there. And we can then go through and add a query. So this query is already added, of course, but I can go through and uh, configure that either as a predefined one. So one of the predefined queries is the user planner tasks, but we could also create a custom query if we wanted to as well and, and query that and display the content. Uh, once we've um, built our query, uh, it's a case of going through and defining which columns we want to display, add some conditional formatting uh, or anything like that that we want to uh, create on that content coming not just from the SharePoint list, but also from Microsoft Graph as well. So that's uh, one of the products that we've been uh, working on. We've also worked on uh, a product here called the Data Viewer. I won't go into detail on that one. Um, but the Data Viewer is uh, a tool that works in a similar way, but you can connect to um, back-end data that's maybe coming from OData uh, or, or different data sources, um, including BCS, because that's how what founded us in the first place. Um, and you can either display that data in a grid or also into charts now that can be uh, very easily customized. Uh, we also have uh, another product, um, Social Squared, which is a, a discussion forum that we've been working on. And um, also uh, something that we're launching this week is our permissions management tool. And um, this permissions management tool is a, a tool that's geared towards the site owner as well as, uh, as a site collection administrator or even a, a tenant admin. Um, the, nice <laughs> <laughs> the nice thing about this is we can uh, contextually uh, access the reports from within the site. So here we can go through and produce a uh, permissions report. It will enumerate all of the Office 365 groups and things like that as well. So we can go through and actually determine how a user was permissioned uh, on the site and drill down into those groups to be able to determine how that was uh, granted. Um, and we're making use of some of the extensions uh, in here as well. Um, although I can't see it. <laughs> so there is an extension in here that uh, also allows me to access the permissions report uh, directly from within inside the, uh, the site. So thank you very much. Thank you, Brent. So uh, OK, so at Hyperfish, when we got started a few years ago, we built a web application that sat alongside Office 365 and the Microsoft Graph, but it didn't build on SharePoint at the time. But as we've evolved, we've been asked by our customers, and we've wanted to add things into Office 365, and so we did that through SPFX Web Parts. Now, our application was initially built using uh, React in the front end, so it was really straightforward for us to take existing reusable code and components, wrap them up in our uh, SPFX framework, and deploy them to SharePoint. So here on the screen, you can see a demo intranet site using the swanky new home site stuff that you would have seen in the keynote. Um, we've done some integration work by dropping these existing uh, our, our SPFX web parts uh, into these modern uh, page templates and so forth that SharePoint now offers. So this was really straightforward using, uh, you know, using, these re using these React components and wrapping them up. And so we have a couple of components here, people search and a directory, and also org charts, really simple to use. You can go find people uh, just by typing their name and filtering and so forth. But as we were doing this, we felt like with the rise of Teams over the last couple of years, we wanted to be where the users are going. And we wanted to make sure that you could go and find and connect with people uh, in the tool that you were using at the time. And so more and more, that's obviously Teams. And so it was really easy for us now with SharePoint Framework 1.8, I believe it was, uh, simply going and taking those packages and making them available in Teams was really straightforward for us. So if I flip over to this Teams tab I have here. Here we've got that same directory web part running in right from within Teams, and it's really easy, again, just to 
Go and find people uh, that you might want to work with or connect with, for example. You might want to see where in the org they happen to sit, for example, pulling up a quick org chart here. Uh, all this data can come from Microsoft Graph, Office 365, could be your HR system in the back end, maybe your payroll provider. We aggregate all that information and make it available for you to find people really quickly and easily. There were a couple of things that were really important to us as we did this. One was to be able to adapt our solutions for teams when we made them available. And so with the SharePoint framework, we were able to detect when we were running in teams and make small tweaks and changes, maybe styling, for example, to make it really fit in context of uh, where the user was. So again, this is the directory, but if I flip over to the org chart component here, this is just the same stuff that we run in SharePoint. We can now run right from within Teams, and uh, users can go find people and navigate around the org really easily and straightforwardly. So for us, it was just super easy to bring this stuff into Teams and get parts of our application that made sense in front of users at the right time and in the right app and all contextual of where they were currently working. Thanks thank you, Chris. Time. So before I let you go on the stage, thank you. Uh, just a few questions, but we wanted to clarify for the audience as well. So first of all, one by one, uh, let's start with Brett with the alphabetical order. Uh, so, um, so from a Microsoft 365 or my, uh, Windows, uh, Microsoft 365 API or Dev Platform perspective, what were the capabilities you were actually using in that solution? Yep. So um, as I mentioned, we. we the, these products were built on uh, WSPs originally, and then we evolved them to, uh, to the SharePoint add-in model, where they were largely JavaScript and, and jQuery. Um, so in order to build the client-side web parts, we had to really start from the ground up. Um, we, we started using TypeScript and, and uh, React. Um, and uh, one of the things that um, we were talking about was the fact that because of the lack of capabilities in the, uh, the add-in model, we've got a lot of uh, SharePoint on-premises customers that are actually super excited to, uh, to move towards the client-side web part. So one of the things that we've also been doing is some conditional compilation uh, using Gulp to, uh, to ensure that um, there's certain things that, for example, the, uh, the side panel is uh, rendered differently We're using an earlier version of the SharePoint framework than yep. the, the 1.8 that we're offering uh, now with the, with the web parts. Yeah. So you think the, the, the modern way of system development has been really beneficial for you, right? Yes, so absolutely. So moving from a farm solutions to add-ins and then to the SharePoint framework. What about you, Chris? What are the, the capabilities and APIs? What are you using under the hood? So I'd say it really boils down to two things. One is we're really heavy Microsoft Graph users. So we use a lot of data out of, <laughs> that's Jeremy Thake, I can yep. tell. <laughs> um, Noisy Aussie. Um, so lots of, lots of graph usage, mostly around user data and profiles and so forth. And like all computer science problems, they all boil down to being uh, problems with identity, right? Yep. And so the other component that we really uh, liked with SPFX is the integration with, um, with Azure Active Directory for identity and being able to flow that identity through to our back end and, yeah. and know who somebody is and what they've got access to. Yeah, you don't have to build all of that by yourself in a custom application hosted in Azure. So you're in the context of the user and organization all the time. Yeah, we didn't want any login prompts. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. What about the Microsoft Teams side of the story? What was the kind of a journey on moving our applications to the Microsoft Teams? Uh, which one, Brett, first? I think we're both going to say the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so, yeah, it really was pretty simple. Uh, there, was, there was no um, complications earlier on whilst we were on the, uh, the program with you. Um, there was, of course, some, uh, some teething problems that came from the framework. Um, but uh, once they were ironed out, um, yeah, it was a relatively straightforward process. Yep. Yep. What about you, Chris? Yeah, for us, it was literally a, a, a small manifest change in our SPFX package. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, obviously testing the web parts and teams, we noticed some styling things we wanted to change, some functionality that we wanted to change when, when the apps were in teams. Yeah. So we're able to detect that and, and sort of modify our behavior on the fly accordingly. Absolutely. So you can easily access the teams context when you're in teams because that's actually in the base class of the web part. Um, so we're using WebPart base class name, but it's actually a Microsoft Teams tab, which is slightly confusing, but uh, that's technical uh, background on the, the details on the background. Sure. Uh, what was, by the way, the, the kind of a why did you want to go to the Teams side? What is the, the reason of, of planning to go to that direction as well? So, yeah, dating back to when I first saw Microsoft Teams, 
first questions was, is this something that you can customize and, and, and add solutions to? And uh, it seemed obviously that the answer was no at that, that time. So um, I was really excited in uh, Orlando um, at the uh, Microsoft Ignite last year when I saw uh, that this was actually coming. You could now build the client-side web parts with the same model as you're building for, uh, for SharePoint. So it made absolute sense. We, seen the numbers that you're, uh, you're advertising for the, for the growth of Microsoft Teams. Um, I have kids to feed and things like that, so as an <laughs> ISV, um, it makes sense that we, uh, we also work in that area as well. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, what about you, Chris? <laughs> yeah, so when we first initially looked at Teams and the extensibility, we thought about what our options were going to be about integrating with it, and, uh, it, it, and we, we could have done it um, using a whole bunch of custom code, more, more pieces to our application on the back end, but when we saw the SPFX integration and what was going on with SharePoint, it was just a no-brainer for us to extend into Teams. Yeah. Um, we wanted to make sure that users had the most friction-free kind of experience with using our tools, and so getting into the applications they were using was super important to us. Even you know, control tabbing between windows for a user sort of breaks that context, and we wanted yep. to stay right within the context of a team. Yep, absolutely. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Brett. Yep. Thank, Thank you. Thanks for this Now, the SharePoint development, obviously, is not just about SharePoint framework. I'm sure that's been massively adapted and it's growing, the usage is growing all the time. But then on the SharePoint side, um, if we think about classic SharePoint, one of the big areas on the SharePoint side of us is also the modern portals and modern experiences uh, within SharePoint. And here are two uh, main or really important resources, especially for designers and developers to take advantage on trying to understand what's possible around the modern experiences and the modern portal extensibility uh, within the SharePoint. So first of all, we have the SharePoint Lookbook, AKMS SP uh, SharePoint uh, Lookbook, uh, where you can actually go and see example designs from our design organization. So SharePoint design organization, how you can build a modern uh, portal using uh, the modern SharePoint experiences. And then we actually have really cool capability, still in preview, but it was released first to be publicly available around about March timeframe, which is called SharePoint provisioning service. Also, um, uh, Mark, uh, Pratt was mentioning this in a keynote, AKMS uh, SP provisioning, which will give you the capability of provisioning those SharePoint lookbook designs to any tenant in the world. So if you're looking, as an example, if you're looking to have a cool demo tomorrow for your customer or for your manager to explain why the modern SharePoint is insanely cool, you can actually go, if you are a tenant administrator, you can go to the AKMS uh, SP provisioning and provision example site collections and content to your sample tenant, which you can then use to demonstrate in a browser how the functionalities can be used in the modern SharePoint. To demonstrate all of this, oh, somebody was clapping. Woohoo! Yay! Thank you. Um, to demonstrate all of this, let me invite here Cathy Du uh, from our development team uh, to see some of this uh, magic in practice. Fantastic. Welcome, Cathy. Thank you. Oh, let me help you. Here, here, <laughs> here. Let me help you. Here we Coming go. to the right screen. Yes. <laughs> Fantastic. As Vesa said, our SharePoint lookbook is a really great resource. Many times over the years, we heard SharePoint team always shows off these great looking portals and intranets at the conferences, but I can never get mine to look quite like that. It would be really great if you shared some examples. So the SharePoint lookbook was intended to be just that. It's a set of curated design templates that showcase what you can do with SharePoint out of the box and how you can build it. So as you can see here, on the screen on the SharePoint Lookbook website, not only do we have examples, but you have the ability to download this as a PDF so that you can take it and use it within your own team. And as we scroll through and look at the different ones, we have intranet homepage designs, we have hub site designs, we have homepage designs, it's a little taking a second, homepage designs and team site designs. So you can go through and really look at these very curated set of designs, and as you go in and look at them in depth and look at them a little bit deeper, you see a great call out on the left-hand side of the features that are included in these templates and what is actually used to put them together. So the web parts that are used, the layouts that are used, the images that are used. And so you get a really great viewpoint into what is there. So that was a quick look at our um, homepage for team sites. Let's take a quick look at our um, intranet here. We'll go and look at a marketing site. 
So this is an intranet home page for Contoso landings, and you can see in here, we even have a few features in some of these that are marked as coming soon in that left-hand column. So it's something that maybe isn't available right now in your current experience, but would be coming soon to your experience. So you can really see how to tailor these and how to customize them. And so this is just one part, as Vesa said, really having that great experience to be able to create these in your own environment, get your hands on them and use them is the next kind of piece of that. So let's take a look at our online provisioning service. So with the SharePoint online provisioning service, it gives you that ability to create these site collections fully branded using that lookbook look in my own environment. So you can see all of the different experiences here, the different ones that we looked at. You can see them all, and here's that marketing landing page that we looked at before. So if I come to that, you can see right from here, I've got that same look, that same site template that I wanted to do before. Tells me what's included, what's going to be created. It gives me that brief look into that full layout as it loads. And then right here at the very top, very easy to go ahead and add to your tenant. So if I just come click on this button, wait for the little internet magic to work. Magic. <laughs> it's authenticating and authorizing the person. We already signed in as a tenant administrator to the service. And so as you see that, when it loads up, because I'm already signed in to the service as a tenant admin, it goes ahead and pulls my information in. It's going to send me a notification when the site is finished completing building out to my notification email that I set to Megan B. It's going to give me that site landing title, and I'm actually going to customize this a little bit and be like SPC dev. And then I'm going to add a, a append a little bit here on my URL, go ahead and customize that as well. So right away, I'm able to go ahead and do this. And then you can see I can flag whether or not I want the theme to be applied and go ahead and click that. So right away, if I have an existing team, I would select that and then select the team. I'm going to go ahead and hit provision. And so it's going to go out and create this in the background while I'm waiting. And it's going to send me an email when it's complete. But I'm going to kind of tab over and kind of Showcase a little oh, bit. Sorry, Kathy. Kathy, there's okay. a small validated first to URL oh. and then clicking one more time. So here ah, we go. Two sorry. clicks. That's right. I forget. I do this so often, I forget that you have to click twice. Uh, I have to do it and tell it to actually provision it. It does ask multiple times. Like, are you yes. sure? You're sure? And then it's going to start. So here is where it tells me it's actually provisioning it. It actually doesn't take very long. It's just no. a few minutes to create these site collections. Or basically, depending on a template what you're selecting. Uh, so this template is relatively simple. So it's going to be roughly 1.3, uh, 1.5 minutes or two minutes to get it fully provisioned with an example content in your tenant. So really quick and easy to go through and build these. Um, I'm betting that our email isn't quite here yet. But yeah, we're uh, well, or we can chit chat for a while. So yeah. the one thing what I wanted to actually pinpoint here, and I do this, they, they always tell me, do not come to the computer when I'm presenting, and I'm going to do this now. So, okay. um, and I'm going to hear about this one again. Now, um, the one thing that's actually really cool about here is that this is, uh, like Kathy says, is, is obviously the template, uh, and lookbook templates, and we're looking into also having here more complex templates, like the SharePoint starter kit. Yeah which is much more complicated, and it takes longer to provision as well. It does take longer to provision. A lot of what you're going to see in some of the sessions with the Contoso sites, and especially as you go into, you see presenters going into the Change the Look panel, and you'll see multiple themes from the Contoso site. Those are actually included in this SharePoint uh, starter kit. And so if you do provision this template in there, you get a set of web parts, you get a set of themes that go along with it that you can use throughout your environment. So already giving you that head step and creating your own sites using these same features. Excellent. Let's the cross the there. fingers and see the out, out, outlook. Uh, cross, cross, cross. Ah, Is did our mail got here? Did we get it? Oh, that's yesterday's oh, email. So yesterday's it's not, we're not talking too, uh, too slow. But we can actually have a look on what's happening here. We'll probably get the email uh, in a second. So this one was the one which I created earlier this morning. Yes. So we didn't want to rely on the internet too much, but we know it's happening in the background, and we'll take a look at it as it goes through. But this is that site. So as you see, it provisioned out my marketing landing site, complete with images, branding, videos, 3D components. Everything that was in that sample lookbook site is right here now. Easy for me to go in. It creates lists. It creates events. Everything's ready for me to go. So I have a fully great-looking website that I can start from and really showcase out. 
Ah, there's the mail. It's completed okay, there we go. now. That so didn't take too long, though. It doesn't take too long. So there it gets that mail of coming in. Here is that site is ready. And right from there, you can click on the link, just like Vesa did on the last mail from yesterday. So, Excellent. Fantastic. Now, thank you, Kathy, for that one. Yes. Now, before I let you go here, um, Kathy is also uh, responsible not only on the branding side of the things and, and driving that kind of a work from a developer side, but you've been closely involved in our API improvements. So we wanted to, to actually explain what's happening on this side as well. Yeah, so I've been helping out with APIs with Jeremy Kelly on our team. And we've been doing a lot of great things when it comes to APIs and giving developers the tools that they need to go out and create things. And there's two in particular that we want to highlight. We have the one that's coming out very soon for site collection enumeration. So we know for years people have been asking, give me a list of my sites. And so this API will give me a list of all of my site collections, including OneDrive for Business. So we're really excited that that one's going to be coming out soon and really solving that feature gap that we've had. And then our also our followed sites API is going to be coming out to beta soon. This one's going to give you a really great toolkit if you're maybe creating things and you want to target it to people's sites that they're following. You're having new employees on board and you want to have them follow sites automatically. Or if you want to target things for people when you're in your web part, showing them content that's related to something they're already following. So two really great new APA, API innovations that we have coming out, and we're really excited to share them with you. Excellent. Thank you, Kathy. Now, um, what about the SharePoint development? It's not just about the APIs and SharePoint development as well. So there's multiple sides of the SharePoint development. And this is the, the kind of a, one of the challenges in the SharePoint development as well, because it's not just about the professional developers uh, who then use the Microsoft Crash and SharePoint Framework and Azure at, at Machine Learning and uh, Artificial Intelligence capabilities. But SharePoint development is also about low-code developers. So using those power apps, creating adaptive cards uh, for presentation, like in the search, uh, in the upcoming search capabilities, which um, uh, was shown in the keynote, or using list formatters, the column formatting, or the view formatting to define how the list information is actually being used. And obviously, then we have the makers capabilities, uh, creating list conditional formatting, business automation using the flows, taking advantage of out-of-the-box flows. There's a lot of capabilities available in the flow side as well. And then taking advantage of the Power BI as a maker perspective. And then obviously, as an author of the sites, you're creating sites and pages and lists and functionalities in SharePoint. And we as a SharePoint developers, I think the main skill we've been having for many, many years is a combination of all of this. So it shouldn't be, it, we shouldn't think about this in a way that if you're a SharePoint Pro developer, you shouldn't be care about pro, uh, power, uh, power Apps because that's not absolutely true. Power Apps is a definitely a suitable capability for many, many uh, scenarios. And if it matches the customer scenario or your scenario, it might be the right choice uh, on, rather than implementing something completely custom. So taking advantage also on this non-pro developer capabilities is absolutely a right way of thinking uh, in the SharePoint context. Um, it's a, it's, like I said, it's not choosing between. It's combining your solution design between all of these options. One of the things that I also wanted to kind of call out uh, or quickly walk through is our SharePoint developer roadmap. And there is a subject to change on the top right corner just in case, because obviously we don't technically always want to give you an exact date and promises, because if there will be changes in our internal organization, um, we might change some of these plans. Um, if you've been active on our community calls and our community presentations, you might have heard some of, some of this stuff already, but just recapping where we are actually heading uh, with SharePoint development. So obviously, we're looking into going to, towards smaller and more uh, agile and more rapid SharePoint framework releases. So you will actually know that there's a new release, for example, every single month uh, coming around SharePoint Framework. So you can kind of allocate your resources uh, based on the assumption that there will be a new version coming out on a certain time frame every single month. And then if in our side, if a capability is not ready, it's going to be just postponed for the following release. And that's going to probably help you on your designing your uh, own development processes. We're looking into also improving the Teams integration. 
Uh, we will, there's a separate session around the team's uh, development together with SharePoint Framework where Luca is involved uh, later this week uh, where we're gonna talk about the details over there. But it's really around supporting the private tabs uh, being built using SharePoint Framework as well and additional capabilities on the, on the team's integration. We're also looking into doing general availability of the library components, really important piece uh, of designing those uh, large complex solutions. So you're able to build a separate component which is then being referenced and used by multiple web parts and, and other extensions on a page. Office add-ins with SharePoint Framework, first time shown actually in Microsoft Built, uh, really uh, truly shown, uh, is now in the pipeline as well, getting to be released to preview and if there's a demand for it, it's definitely going to go GA later this year. So if you're interested on that capability, please give us feedback whenever that goes to the preview, uh, hopefully with the next version uh, of SharePoint Framework, which is coming out relatively soon. Content security policy. We keep on hearing the, and we keep on having discussions within the industry related on the, the security challenges within the JavaScript, and those are real. So we need to actually make sure that uh, the enterprise security, uh, the SharePoint is following up on the enterprise security levels, and the content security policy will give you additional security around random, randomly loaded JavaScripts to block those to get loaded in your tenants. So you're able to then conf configure those in a tenant level. The CSM.NET standard was already in the slides uh, from Cathy as well. We are actively working on that one. We do, and this is one of those topics where I do need to apologize on behalf of our engineering, but we actively understand that it's a critical piece uh, to get implemented as well. It is coming, uh, and hopefully coming relatively soon. We're also looking into open sourcing our own out-of-the-box Yeoman generator. Uh, which will then mean that we're combining the existing open source Yeoman generator together with out of the box Yeoman, ge Yeoman generator, and let's see what that means in practice. Now, the other areas which are in top of mind, and top of mind basically means that we're actively planning on them, but we're not necessarily actively yet building on these things. Uh, we're going to have additional content extensions for modern pages, so you will have additional placeholders and opportunities of adding your extensibility on the modern portals which is something what we keep on hearing. You need to give us more flexibility uh, to match what we were able to do within the classic uh, publishing on the modern portals and communication sites. Fluid framework, which is shown uh, by Lucas demo, is gonna be then integrated, or we're gonna work together with fluid framework people to make sure that the experience is optimal together with SharePoint framework. The throttling updates, additional guidance on that, the API changes, so you are up to date on how you can hit SharePoint, how you can connect to the SharePoint APIs in the most uh, efficient way. The developer tooling improvements in SharePoint Framework, uh, those monthly releases where we're heading will help us to also to start planning all of the developer goodness and making the developers more happier on this platform based on, again, the feedback what you're providing. And then the store story for SharePoint Framework solutions. It's been a long time in our roadmap. It is progressing, I promise, I do promise. Uh, but I can't go into the exact details where we are with that one. It should be coming out, well, I'm gonna, not going to say any dates, uh, but it's definitely uh, being worked on, actively moving on. Uh, and that will then enable you as a developer to expose SharePoint Framework web parts and components using the Microsoft Store. Uh, it's in an app source, an office store. We're going to go all of the details later on uh, during this year. Now, before I actually want to close up, there's one thing what I wanted to actually kind of go through as well. Not that we are uh, forgetting this. And this is a section where I want to thank you. And that's why I'm actually going to jump here and say thank you, thank you, everybody, for being part of our community and being part of our community on building this success together. And this is really around the SharePoint patterns and practices story. So the SharePoint, like Jeff said already in Jeff's keynote, it's, this is not possible, this would not be possible without you. The feedback, the activities, the code, the stuff that you share between the users, uh, between the others in the community is tremendous. All of that is giving the, the energy and possibilities for others to also succeed within this uh, ecosystem. So having part, you part of this uh, community, having you giving us feedback, giving us code, open source contributing on our open source projects, contributing on, on all of our uh, documentation is super critical for the success of the Microsoft 365 platform as well. So thank you, thank you, thank you for that one. Uh, if you're not part of the SharePoint Patterns and Practices, and if you're not aware of SharePoint Patterns and Practices community uh, and the ecosystem or the, uh, the way we actually work with the weekly community calls, and next one coming on, the, on this Thursday, please go to the AKMS SPPMP and read more around the opportunities of 
increasing your productivity as a developer as well, but then also being part of the open source community, helping others to succeed together rather than competing uh, between each other in this journey. So thank you, everybody, one more time on that one. Now, before I close, somebody already did that almost time. Just to recap one more time, uh, on the SharePoint development, please uh, getting started. Uh, build SharePoint framework extensibility is definitely the future where we are heading. And let me dive away from here. This is going to hurt. And uh, explore patents and practices, open source assets. There's a lot of free assets available, open source projects, controls, which will increase you as a developer, your productivity as a developer and then extend and integrate with Microsoft ecosystem. This is not SharePoint framework, it's not just about SharePoint. If when you go to the cloud, you're able to use exactly the same tooling to extend other services as well. Also, if you are interested, uh, and definitely you should be, you sign up to our Office 365 developer program, AKMS OFFDP. Uh, you will get a free tenant, which will renew automatically as long as you use that for developer purposes. So, so there's automatic renewal on that tenant. Thank you. But that's all we're going to do on this keynote, at uh, this dev keynote session. We have plenty of awesome session coming up this week from the Microsoft people and also from the community people. Enjoy. This is going to be an awesome week. Thank you.